Welcome, wrestling enthusiasts and curious minds alike, to a deep dive into the riveting world of grappling mysteries with the wrestling conspiracy theory iceberg. Join us as we navigate the murky waters of secret alliances, backstage politics, and hidden agendas that have shaped the world of professional wrestling. From controversial finishes to alleged scripted rivalries, we'll unravel the layers of speculation and intrigue that challenge the very essence of this captivating sport. Buckle up for a rollercoaster ride through the uncharted depths of the wrestling world, where the line between reality and fiction blurs, leaving us questioning where the truth starts and where it ends. This is the Wrestling Conspiracy Theory Iceberg. Warning, this episode contains content that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. And we're starting off at the tip of the iceberg, tier 6. To start off the iceberg, we have the king of conspiracies. Chris Benoit is innocent. Chris Benoit was one of the most respected wrestlers of his generation, but all of his accomplishments inside the ring will forever be tainted by the actions that he committed in the last weekend of his life, where he took the lives of his wife, child and himself. To this day, some diehard fans of Chris Benoit do not buy the story, and they have theorized that Chris Benoit was framed and the actual murderer was Kevin Sullivan. This theory stems back to WCW, when Kevin Sullivan was a booker and was married to Nancy, aka Woman. Sullivan booked Chris Benoit and Nancy as an on-screen couple and they actually fell in love with each other, causing Nancy to divorce Sullivan and marry Benoit in real life. Kevin Sullivan essentially booked his own divorce. This led fans to theorizing that Sullivan was behind the murders because he was angry about Nancy leaving him for Chris. Sullivan infamously had a gimmick as a Satanist and this made some fans believe that the murders were some sort of sacrifice. What did not make things any better was the fact that Nancy's death was edited into Chris Benoit's Wikipedia page 14 hours before the bodies were found. And up next we have the curse of the Von Erichs. Few wrestling families have been as celebrated or notorious as the Von Erich family. They were a dynasty of brothers who were wrestling royalty in the late 70s and early 80s. They seemed destined to truly take over the wrestling world, but after they faced tragedy after tragedy, their wrestling legacy was tainted. Their tragic story is so famous in fact that there's a movie starring Zac Efron called The Iron Claw about their story. The Von Erich curse is often thrown around a lot but not much is known about the true origin of this conspiracy theory. This theory stems from Fritz Von Erich, the patriarch of the Von Erichs. During his career, Fritz wanted to portray a bad guy and chose a Nazi character to attract more heat from crowds. Fritz chose this gimmick even though he had no history or connection to Germany. The theory goes that in 1958, a female ghost of a holocaust survivor put a curse on Fritz as revenge for making light of Nazism. The ghost explained that while she was alive, she had survived through the atrocities of the holocaust, but she had lost five of her six children in the concentration camps. As retribution, the ghoulish figure placed the same curse on Fritz, one that would see him suffer the same gruesome fate as her. Over the next 40 years, the curse actually materialized as five of his six Von Erich boys died before him. And up next we have Roman Reigns fakes cancer. In 2018, Roman Reigns shockingly relinquished the Universal Championship after revealing that he had been diagnosed with leukemia. The segment was one of the most emotional moments not only of the air but of Monday Night Raw and WWE history. This incident led to wrestling fans questioning if Roman Reigns actually had cancer. Some of them felt that years after trying their best to get Roman Reigns over, WWE had resorted to faking that Roman Reigns had leukemia. Fans online claimed that the superstar had faked his illness because he had suffered little hair or weight loss. The fans also questioned the truth surrounding the leukemia claims because in the four months that he took time off, Roman Reigns filmed Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw and then he returned just in time for Wrestlemania. And up next we have The Ultimate Warrior was replaced. The Ultimate Warrior was one of the biggest stars in the WWF during the late 80s and was handed the WWF torch by Hulk Hogan when he beat him for the WWF Championship at Wrestlemania 6 in 1990. He didn't quite pan out as a top guy of WWE and after losing the gold the following year, a myriad of creative differences led to Warrior being fired following SummerSlam 1991 when he held up Vince McMahon for a big payday. Ultimately, Warrior was rehired again in 1992 but he looked quite different. He had shorter hair and was a lot leaner. This caused fans to create the conspiracy theory that Jim Helwig, the man behind the original Ultimate Warrior character, had passed away and a new performer was under the paint as the second Ultimate Warrior. Some even speculated that Kerry Von Eric, aka the Texas Tornado, was under the guise. And up next we have Vince McMahon sent the NWO to kill WCW. The NWO was one of the most legendary factions in the history of professional wrestling. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall had performed for Vince's WWF in the 90s as Diesel and Razor Ramon, but they jumped ship to WCW at a time when Eric Bischoff was given more control of the company. 
Nash and Hall debut for WCW as the Outsiders, with the insinuation that they had been sent by Vince and the WWF to kill WCW. This was furthered when Hulk Hogan joined the team at Bash at the Beach 1996 to form the New World Order, along with former 123 Kid Sean Waltman and the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, all former WWF stars. Several conspiracy theorists have claimed that this was actually going on behind the scenes, believing Hall and Nash didn't go to WCW just for the money but instead to destroy Vince's rival promotion from the inside, allowing WWF to rule supreme once again. Even though the NWO put more eyes on the WCW product, they played a massive role in WCW's downfall and allegedly this was all Vince's idea. And up next we have Brock Lesnar shoots on The Undertaker. Brock Lesnar famously defeated The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30, much to the resting fans' dismay and shock. This conspiracy theory goes that Brock was actually supposed to lose the match, but he thought, screw it, I'm taking the win and he dumped the tired old Undertaker on his head, causing him to get concussed and pinned him for real, ending his streak. This conspiracy theory is interesting in the way that Paul Heyman himself is the one who first brought it up, and heavily implied that Brock Lesnar stole the win that night. And up next we have Randy Savage giving Hulk Hogan a black eye before WrestleMania 9. Hulk Hogan wrestled his supposed retirement match against Sid Justice at WrestleMania 8 in 1992, and it would be a full year before he would return to the squared circle. He returned to back up his best friend Brutus Beefcake against Money Inc at WrestleMania 9, but he had a noticeable change in his appearance. Hogan showed up to the event with a nasty black eye. There are a few tales as to how the Hulkster got the black eye. Kayfabe would tell you that it was Ted DiBiase who paid off some thugs to jump Hogan before the show, while well, the supposed true story was that Hulk was involved in a jet ski accident. However, the conspiracy theory believes that the macho man Randy Savage punched his former friend in the eye after he found out that Miss Elizabeth had left him due to influence from Hogan's wife, Linda. Some rumors even go as far to say that Hogan and Elizabeth were having a secret affair, and Savage cleaned Hogan's clock out when he found out. And up next we have CM Punk joining WWE to destroy AEW. CM Punk returned to wrestling after 7 long years when he debuted in AEW in 2021. However, his time in AEW was marred by controversy, stemming from backstage fights and putting Tony Khan's life at risk, according to Khan himself. All of this contributed to him getting fired from AEW just 2 years after he joined the promotion. CM Punk surprisingly joined WWE in late 2023, a company that he detested and bashed negatively for years. CM Punk is notorious for holding grudges, so this left many fans theorizing that CM Punk joined WWE for the sole purpose of killing AEW, because his messy departure and incident with Tony Khan left such a sour taste in his mouth that he was willing to join a promotion that he literally stated that he hated for many years in order to destroy AEW. And now we're moving down a tier, into the fifth tier, with our first entry being Cody Rhodes' New All Along. Cody Rhodes famously left WWE in 2016 and made his name on the independents and formed WWE's biggest competitors in almost 20 years, AEW. He then shockingly returned back to WWE in 2022. This conspiracy theory goes that Cody Rhodes planned all of this from the start. Cody Rhodes wanted to be a top guy and get top guy money, but Stardust wasn't it. He knew that if he could make his name bigger, he'd get a boatload of cash from WWE and be at the top of the card, so he concocted an idea to create competition with the goal of leaving at some point to get Vince's money. He found willing participants in Omega and the Bucks, and then they stumbled into a big money backer in Tony Khan that made Cody's plan way better than he ever thought. He knew he'd leave for WWE money eventually, and he knew that because of his name and profile that if his idea failed, he would be able to still make decent money going back to WWE. And up next we have ECW was a WWE subsidiary and Vince forced them to close down. ECW being a WWE subsidiary has long been a running conspiracy in the wrestling world. It explains why Vince was constantly funding ECW and also why Vince gave a lot of ECW wrestlers airtime on WWE Raw. ECW stayed in the business despite constantly verging on bankruptcy. Paul Heyman himself even revealed that WWE paid multiple loans with the biggest one being a $500,000 loan in 2000. In March of 2001, WWF won the Monday Night War when Vince McMahon purchased WCW. A few weeks earlier, ECW closed its doors and Paul Heyman walked into a job at the WWF as a commentator on Monday Night Raw. Some conspiracy theorists believe that Vince McMahon actually owned ECW from day one and he forced Paul Heyman to close their doors. The accepted narrative is that ECW couldn't afford to stay open, but Tommy Dreamer argued otherwise, stating that ECW could have indeed stayed open because they had other offers on the table. And up next you have the real reason behind Shawn Michaels' break from wrestling. In 1998, Shawn Michaels was forced to step away from WWE because of back injuries. He was on the shelf for 4 years and he eventually returned to the ring in 2002. 
There's actually two popular conspiracy theories relating to the real reasons as to why Shawn Michaels stepped away from the ring. One of these theories believe that Shawn wasn't nearly as hurt as everyone thought, but he was running Vince up for essentially an extended vacation with pay, since he knew that Vince wouldn't want him to jump ship to WCW, even if he decided against it. The second conspiracy is that Shawn was actually absent for so long to deal with his massive drug problem, which could have ended up really bad if he had not addressed it. Conspiracy theorists believe that it's too strange that Shawn Michaels came back in just a few years from a career-threatening injury and not only be fine, but somehow be an even better professional wrestler than he was before. And up next we have Triple H marrying Stephanie McMahon for the sole purpose of power. In 1996, Triple H took part in the Curtain Call, where he famously broke kayfabe with Kevin Nash, Scott Hall and Shawn Michaels at Madison Square Garden. He solely took the blame for this incident and was booked badly by Vince for it. He eventually climbed back up the card though. The basis of this conspiracy is that Triple H was so traumatized by the falling out of the Curtain Call that he was willing to do anything to get to the top of the card, like politicking his way into certain positions and even going for the boss's daughter to gain favor from Vince. Triple H started dating Stephanie McMahon in 2000, the same year he started to refer to himself as the game. According to this theory, he's an expert at playing the game and doing anything to win, even if it means faking love for the boss's daughter to get a seat at the table. After Triple H got with Stephanie, his infamous reign of terror happened and he has slowly risen to the top of WWE as he is now in charge of everything and Vince is essentially kicked out of the company. And up next we have the Montreal Screwjob being a work. The Montreal Screwjob is one of the most controversial and infamous incidents in wrestling history. The plot of Vince McMahon to screw Bret Hart and prevent him from taking the WWF title to WCW has been talked about ad nauseum. There are several wrestling fans and even wrestlers like Scott Hall, Kevin Nash and Road Dogg that believe the Montreal Screwjob was one big work. This is mainly because everyone involved benefited from the ordeal massively. It garnered mainstream media attention for WWE, Shawn Michaels was crowned WWF champion and was the unquestionable top heel in the company, Vince McMahon became an on-screen character as the evil boss that allowed Stone Cold Steve Austin to become the biggest babyface in company history, and despite how things transpired in the long term, Bret Hart did secure a lucrative deal from WCW and went out of WWF as a sympathetic babyface who could have been a huge success if booked properly. This theory is compounded by the fact that Bret Hart wrote the WCW letters in the air to the hard cam and they captured every single second of it. Conspiracy theorists ask the question, why would WWE allow their top star to mention their rival promotion in this manner? And up next we have Vince McMahon sending Vince Russo to kill WCW. In the mid to late 90s, Vince Russo was the WWE head writer and was a huge part of the creative direction during the Attitude Era. In interviews, Russo has said that he left WWE in the summer of 99 because he felt that the addition of a second show, SmackDown, would water down his creative juices. Russo then replaced Eric Bischoff and jumped ship to WCW which was on a downturn seeing that the ratings had declined and there were low pay per view and attendance rates in comparison to their prior years. Under Russo's creative control, WCW managed to get even worse as he booked some very questionable things like making himself the world champion and much more. Vince Russo essentially ran WCW into the ground and some conspiracy theorists believe that it was all by the design from the mind of Vince McMahon. This theory believes that McMahon sent Russo as a Trojan horse to WCW on purpose so that they can put the final nail in WCW's coffin. And up next we have Daniel Bryan's fake retirement. Daniel Bryan was forced to temporarily retire in 2016 because he had suffered from at least 10 documented concussions throughout his career. This conspiracy goes that even though Daniel Bryan was actually hurt, he was pushed into retirement even though his injury was not actually career ending. This was done because even though Bryan was pulling in numbers like a top guy, Vince did not see him as such and did not want to build the company around him and instead wanted to build the company around Roman Reigns. Vince saw Bryan as a threat to this as he was overshadowing Roman who was struggling to get truly over with the fans, so they refused to clear Daniel Bryan to wrestle and forced him to stay on the shelf. Daniel Bryan was legitimately injured but through his experimental therapies and rehab, he was able to get cleared by many doctors besides the WWE doctor. This was because WWE had a concussion related lawsuit going on at the time and considering Daniel Bryan's dishonesty in the past about his health, WWE refused to clear him despite him being healthy and ready to return to wrestling. But the problem was, Daniel Bryan's contract was going to expire soon and he was dead set on returning to the ring, even if it wasn't in WWE. New Japan even expressed some interest in him. Another conspiracy is that WWE only cleared him and allowed him to return to the ring because they did not want him to wrestle in another company. This was all before AEW even formed. And now we're moving down the iceberg into the fourth tier, with our first entry on the fourth tier being the Macho Man Randy Savage and Stephanie McMahon. The Macho Man was a two-time WWF champion and one of the most popular figures in WWE history. 
However, at the end of 1994, on an episode of Monday Night Raw, Vince McMahon abruptly announced that Randy Savage had left the company. The Macho Man jumped ship to WCW, but he never returned to WWE even after the closure of WCW and was barely acknowledged on WWE television at all until he passed away in 2011. And Savage's WWE Hall of Fame induction came four years later in 2015. There was clearly some bad blood between Vince McMahon and Randy Savage, and many people attribute it to Vince McMahon taking it personally when Savage left for WCW. However, there's a conspiracy theory out there that says that the real reason for Savage's exit from WWE and the subsequent fallout with Vince was due to Savage having a not safe for work affair with Vince's daughter Stephanie when she was only 17 years old. This was after Savage had divorced from Miss Elizabeth. The Macho Man and Stephanie's alleged affair lines up perfectly with the timing of Savage's departure from WWE. What added more fuel to the fire was when Triple H made disparaging comments about the Macho Man in 2004 and Savage responded by threatening to steal the game's girl, Stephanie. This theory persists as one of the longest standing conspiracy theories in all of wrestling. And up next we have Edge was cleared for entering action many years before his eventual return. Adam Copeland, better known as the Rated R Superstar Edge, was one of the biggest names in wrestling he got one last babyface run in before having to call it quits in 2011 after a series of neck injuries escalated to the point of no return. Edge was basically told that if he tried to wrestle again, his life would be at a constant risk. He eventually was cleared and returned to WWE in 2020. However, some conspiracy theorists believe that he actually got cleared to wrestle sometime in the mid-2010s, but WWE refused to let him come back out of the fear that he may hurt himself again and something catastrophic may happen to him. And because there was no real massive wrestling alternative in the USA in the mid-2010s, Edge decided to sit it out. These conspiracy theorists believe that Edge was only cleared to wrestle because WWE were afraid that he was going to join the new upstart wrestling promotion AEW. This makes sense because AEW were interested in signing Copeland before he made his big return to wrestling in 2020. And up next we have William Regal shoots on Goldberg. There has been a conspiracy that the widely respected William Regal, then known as Lord Steven Regal, tried to shoot on the green and heavily pushed rising star Goldberg. The two stars met on a February 1998 edition of WCW Nitro during the early days of Goldberg's now iconic undefeated streak. This match lasted a lot longer than the typical Goldberg squash matches of the era and looked incredibly clunky by comparison. Some fans have speculated that Regal attempted to shoot on Goldberg during the match in an attempt to make him look bad as there was a growing discontent in WCW that Goldberg's push may have been going to his head. To add to this theory, Regal was fired from WCW shortly after this match. And up next we have Triple H tried to stop Kurt Angle's push in 2000. Kurt Angle is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. His big push to the main event scene started in 2000 when he won the WWE Championship for the first time in his career. The Olympic gold medalist ended up winning a WWE world title four times more afterward. Conspiracy theorists online have created the theory that Triple H tried to stop the push of the Olympic gold medalist because he felt that he was too small to be a legit world champion. And only when Triple H had wrestled Kurt Angle to see how legit he was, he approved of Kurt Angle being world champion material. And up next we have Lex Luger cost himself the WWF championship. Lex Luger seemed destined for big things in WWF as he was basically a Vince McMahon wet dream come to life. Upon the departure of Hulk Hogan from WWE in 1993, McMahon chose Luger to be the embodiment of America and lead the company forward. Luger seemed destined to become the WWF champion eventually, but this didn't end up happening. Conspiracy theorists believe that the plan was for him to win the WWF Championship at WrestleMania 10, but then when Lex was told that he was going to win the WWF title at the 10th edition of the Showcase of Immortals, he went to a bar and drunkenly told people that he was going to win the belt. And when this leaked, it led to Vince scrapping his title win and giving it to Bret Hart instead. Even though Luger denies all of this, it's not impossible to believe given that the finish of the 1997 Royal Rumble match ended up changing because Vince Russo opened his mouth about who was going to win. And up next we have Tony Khan on Coke. The owner of AEW, Tony Khan, is a very interesting character. His actions and mannerisms give off a neurodivergent vibe, but some conspiracy theorists have attributed this to him being in love with the cocoa. Whenever the cameras are on Tony Khan, a lot of the time he seems unhinged and very fidgety. He exhibits some strange and eccentric behavior, and his social media posts seem to be provocative and bombastic. Tony Khan is a very busy man as he's working on AEW, Ring of Honor, his family's London-based soccer team, Fulham, and his family's American football team, Jacksonville Jaguars. He has admitted to working almost 20-hour days constantly, and he's part of a multi-billion dollar family. According to conspiracy theorists, this sounds like a perfect environment for a rich businessman to be on that good white powder. Some fans will say it as a joke, but some will swear up and down that he's a coke addict hiding in plain sight. 
And now we're moving down the iceberg into tier 3, with our first entry on tier 3 being Vince Dementia and Exit from WWE. During the last years of Vince McMahon's run in WWE, he made some very questionable booking decisions. This conspiracy theory goes that Vince has legitimately deteriorated in mental health and has early onset dementia, hence the insane booking changes and rewrites hours before the show. Vince McMahon was also famously involved in a hush money scandal in which he paid off a female employee to fornicate with him. Another conspiracy is that Triple H, Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan were the people who leaked all of this information to the press in an attempt to stage some sort of coup so that Vince McMahon could leave the company and they could take over. This managed to work because Vince McMahon resigned from the company when this all came out. Now Triple H is in control of WWE. And up next we have Time Travelers in Wrestling. This entry refers to the conspiracy theory that there have been time travelers at wrestling shows. One instance of this is in the late 80s on a WWF show that involved the Brain Busters, Arn Addison and Tully Blanchard with Bobby the Brain Heenan, a conspicuous looking man who had an uncanny resemblance to Wyatt Family Daniel Bryan was in the background, leaving fans to create the conspiracy that Bryan Danielson is a time traveler. Another instance of this is during a match between JBL and Rey Mysterio, where someone held a sign that said, Triple H fear CM Punk. This was a year before CM Punk made his WWE debut and long before Triple H and CM Punk had real life backstage issues with each other. Another instance occurred in 2003 when a fan held up a sign that said, V1 has been deleted, referring to Matt Hardy, who wouldn't become broken Matt Hardy until 13 years later. And up next we have the Shockmaster debut sabotaged. In the long and storied history of bad wrestling debuts, one stands out above the rest, and that is the debut of the Shockmaster in WCW. The Shockmaster debuted in shocking fashion to say the least, as he burst through a wall, fell on his face, causing his helmet to roll off his head, and then he put it back on, and proceeded to act like a tough guy. According to Dusty Rhodes, the angle was rehearsed earlier in the day without incident. Despite the rehearsal going well, the man behind the mask, Fred Ottman, verbalized that he couldn't see a thing in the glitter-ridden Stormtrooper helmet. Apparently the production staff assured him that it wouldn't be an issue, but following the smooth rehearsal, David Crockett took it upon himself to add an obstacle for the Shockmaster. He decided to nail a 2x4 wooden beam at the bottom of the wall, and he didn't tell the Shockmaster about it. The 2x4 was placed right where the Shockmaster's shins were, a convenient trip hazard. Why did Crockett add the 2x4s to the wall? There's no definitive answer, but according to conspiracy theorists, David Crockett didn't like the Shockmaster gimmick and thought it was an awful concept, and so he sabotaged the Shockmaster's debut in order to curse the gimmick. And up next we have Finn Balor's injury was a ruse. In 2016, just one month after being on the main roster, Finn Balor defeated Seth Rollins at SummerSlam to become the inaugural WWE Universal Champion, but just 22 hours after winning the title, he was forced to relinquish the belt due to a shoulder injury. Some fans didn't buy this and they created the conspiracy that Vince McMahon concocted this plan and forced Balor to relinquish the title, even though he wasn't injured. These conspiracy theorists say that Vince McMahon only made Balor champion as a favor to Triple H, seeing that Triple H was pushing for Vince to give NXT call-ups more credibility on the main roster. These conspiracy theorists back up this theory on the basis that at the time, Vince McMahon didn't push guys heavily who were big in other companies, like how Finn Balor was big in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and also the fact that Vince likes his wrestlers to be big, sweaty, meaty men, and Finn Balor was not a particularly tall or super jacked wrestler. And up next we have Dave Meltzer works for AEW. Dave Meltzer is one of the most influential journalists in wrestling history. It's undeniable that a lot of people respect his opinions on wrestling and his star ratings hold a lot of weight amongst a lot of wrestling fans. Without him, it's arguable that AEW would even exist. However, he has been widely criticized for being biased towards AEW. For example, in the period between 2010 and 2020, he only gave WWE a total of 8 5-star matches, but in AEW's 5-year history, he has given them a total of 27 5-star matches. You could argue that AEW's wrestling is superior, but is there something deeper at play? Many fans have created the conspiracy theory that Malta secretly works for AEW and has been in Tony Khan's back pocket since AEW's inception. Given that Tony Khan is part of a multi-billion dollar family and money isn't really a thing to him. And up next we have Vince McMahon covering up a murder. In the 80s, Superfly Jimmy Snooker was one of the top baby faces in the WWF. However, in 1983, after a WWE show at his hotel that he was sharing with his girlfriend, Nancy Argentino, he called 911 to let them know that his girlfriend was unresponsive. It turns out she was dead, and the coroner's report stated that she died of traumatic brain injuries, consistent with a moving head striking a stationary object. Autopsy findings show that Argentino had more than two dozen cuts and bruises all over her body. 
Snooker was the one suspect involved in the subsequent investigation, but the case was mysteriously just left open and Snooker didn't face any charges. This led to the conspiracy theory that Vince McMahon uses an enormous amount of wealth and influence to cover Jimmy Snooker murdering his girlfriend. Snooker was working for WWF at the time, so this theory believes that Vince McMahon wanted to save the reputation for WWF and so he bribed the police officers in order for Snooker not to get charged. And now we're moving down the iceberg into the second tier, with our first entry on the second tier being Eddie Guerrero still alive. Eddie Guerrero was a legendary wrestler and he sadly passed away in 2005. There was an outpouring of love when he passed from wrestlers and fans alike. However, some fans have created the conspiracy theory that Eddie Guerrero is still alive and it was all an elaborate ruse concocted by Vince McMahon in order to create buzz for his eventual return. Fans thought that Eddie was lying about his death, cheating the Grim Reaper and stealing everyone's emotions. The basis of this conspiracy theory is that Eddie was mentioned in so many storylines so soon after his passing. They also mentioned that Eddie's book and DVD that was released before he died had the title Cheating Death. And up next we have Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young being in a lesbian relationship with each other. Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young are legends in women's wrestling and have been lifelong best friends both on and off the screen, even going as far as to move in with each other and even getting buried next to each other. However, there's a conspiracy theory that believes that these two were actually in a lesbian relationship with each other. Fabulous Moolah has had a litany of heinous allegations lobbied towards her, but these allegations have basically confirmed that she was a bisexual. In the case of Mae Young, she had never married or even had any children. This led fans to connect the dots and come to the conclusion that their relationship was not just platonic and they were actually lovers. And up next we have Cody Rhodes is Dustin Rhodes' son. Cody and Dustin Rhodes are one of the most famous brothers in wrestling and have achieved a lot as a team and against each other. This conspiracy theory goes that when Dustin Rhodes was 15 or 16 years old, he got a girl pregnant and because back in the 80s there was a huge social stigma around teenage pregnancy, Dusty and his wife raised Dustin's son Cody as their own son so that Dustin could focus on his school and career. This sort of thing used to happen more than you think in the past. And up next we have The Rock was trying to take over WWE with Nick Khan. Nick Khan's rise to power in WWE took many fans off guard, especially when it appeared that he had leapfrogged both Stephanie McMahon and Triple H on the WWE hierarchy. He had seemed destined to become the new head of the company when Vince McMahon inevitably stepped away from WWE, but seeing as that has now happened and both Stephanie McMahon and Triple H have returned to positions of power, things are a little bit more as people expected them to be. That didn't stop conspiracy theorists from creating the theory that Nick Khan's ascent was actually part of a plot by Dwayne The Rock Johnson to end up on top of the WWE. The Rock posted to Instagram in December of 2021 where he revealed that he, Nick Khan and his sister were childhood friends having grown up in Hawaii together and reflected on how life comes full circle with Nick Khan running WWE and Nick Khan's sister working on the TV show Young Rock. The Rock has also purchased the company that Vince McMahon created and owned, XFL, so conspiracy theorists believe that he is trying to take control of another one of Vince's babies, the WWE. And up next we have AEW working with WWE. This conspiracy theory was first theorized by Vince Russo of all people and fans started digging deeper into it because of what he said. Conspiracy theorists created two reasons as to why WWE may be working with AEW. And the first reason was because of WWE's fond farewell to Dean Ambrose. Usually when a wrestler leaves the WWE with no intention to retire from the business, they're given nothing but well wishes on their future endeavors, but not in the case of Dean Ambrose. They made the fact that Dean Ambrose wouldn't be renewing his contract public months in advance. They treated Ambrose well on the way out by giving him a SHIELD farewell tour, culminating in the WWE Network special The SHIELD's Final Chapter. These conspiracy theorists asked the question that why would WWE give him a hero's farewell if they knew he was going to jump ship? And why make somebody look strong enough to deserve their own network special when they are planning on battling for another team? Maybe they wanted him to look strong to help give AEW a little bit more credibility. The second reason is the WWE legends in AEW. The conspiracy theories believe that it's not the fact that all WWE legends have appeared or are actively contracted to AEW, but it's more that they still seem to be on good terms with Vince McMahon. For example, Billy Gunn being inducted into the 2019 Hall of Fame even though he was contracted to AEW and DDP's documentary Positively Living being uploaded to the WWE Network weeks before AEW's inaugural pay-per-view Double or Nothing. Triple H and Shawn Michaels even referenced the rival company during DX's Hall of Fame induction speech. This left the conspiracy theorists to ask the question of why would WWE allow this unless they were in cahoots with the elite. And up next we have Vince McMahon and Shawn Michaels' secret gay lovers. It's no secret that Vince McMahon has given special treatment to Shawn Michaels, especially during the 90s when Shawn was at his most volatile and Vince kept on giving him chance after chance. 
Some may attribute this to Shawn Michaels being one of the biggest stars and draws of WWE, but some conspiracy theorists believe that Shawn Michaels did a little strange with Vince McMahon in order to get preferential treatment from him. There were also many rumors floating around of Sean being gay because of his flamboyance and the fact that he appeared almost naked in the magazine Playgirl which was targeted to women and gay men. Even wrestlers in the WWE locker room thought that Sean and Vince had a gay relationship because they were so close and Sean would constantly go into Vince's office for long periods of time. Even Bret Hart alluded to a homosexual relationship between Vince and Sean. I mean, I don't know because you never know what goes on behind closed doors, but I really strongly think there's a link between uh, some kind of a homosexual tie-in between Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon. I what think are you saying? And now we're moving down onto the deepest part of the iceberg, Tier 1. With our first entry on Tier 1 being Vince McMahon killed Owen Hart on purpose. Owen Hart tragically died by falling 78 feet to his death during a failed stunt at WWE's Over the Edge pay-per-view in May of 1998. Owen Hart's fall was accidental but many conspiracy theorists claim that Vince McMahon was behind Owen Hart's death and killed him on purpose. The conspiracy theory believes that the reasoning behind this is because Vince McMahon was bitter at Owen Hart for breaking the neck of his biggest star at the time, Stone Cold Steve Austin, during the peak of the Monday Night Wars with WCW. This theory also believes that Vince had bad feelings towards Owen Hart because of his brother Bret Hart's actions related to the Montreal Screwjob. This conspiracy theory believes that Vince had such disdain and hate for the Hart family that he tried to bury Owen Hart with a blue blazer gimmick and ultimately kill him on live TV to get back at the Hart family and to gain publicity for WWE. And up next we have The Undertaker is Muslim. The Undertaker is one of, if not the greatest wrestler of all time. In 2011, rumors started to emerge that Undertaker had converted to Islam when he was seen shaking hands with elderly Muslim passengers on a plane. This went viral on the internet and a lot of people believe that The Undertaker had converted to Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ishmael. The Undertaker also made a considerable change to his appearance at the time so this led to this conspiracy theory picking up more steam. And up next we have The Click is Illuminati. In the mid 90s, the group of Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash and Shawn Waltman would form The Click and their goal was simple, be at the top of the wrestling industry at all costs necessary. They largely achieved this as Triple H and Shawn Michaels found major success in WWE and Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were basically running WCW getting loads of money along with the New World Order. This conspiracy believes that the Click sold their souls to the devil in order to achieve ultimate success in the wrestling world. The basis of this theory is that the two sweet hand sign resembles devil horns and the naming of their factions New World Order and D-Generation X were Illuminati related. In the Illuminati sense, the New World Order is a conspiracy theory that argues that a shadowy elite is trying to implement a totalitarian world government where everybody is controlled by these elite figures. The New World Order is trying to usher in a culture of degeneration and that's where Degeneration X comes in. Degeneration X was there to inspire the youth to degenerate so that they can be easily controlled by the New World Order. And up next we have Lex Luger killed Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth's most famous relationship was with the Macho Man Randy Savage but not many people know that towards the end of her life she was actually dating Lex Luger and these two were clearly not for each other as the basis of their relationship was pills, alcohol and lots of fighting. Luger was even arrested for beating up Elizabeth while they were both messed up on pills and alcohol giving her two black eyes, a bump on the head and a busted lip. Luger was released on bail but less than two weeks after this incident Miss Elizabeth overdosed while she was with Lex Luger and died. Fans found this suspicious and they came up with a conspiracy theory that something more sinister was at play and Luger was actually the one behind Elizabeth's death. And up next we have Christian buying a slave in Malaysia. This conspiracy theory was created by a wrestling dirt sheet called ProWrestling.net and from there it took on a life of its own. This website stated that while Christian was on a WWE sanctioned trip to Malaysia in 2011, he purchased a slave and tried to bring the slave back to the United States but he didn't go through with it. The whistleblower was apparently a man named Jose Gonzalez and was part of the anti-slavery union. And next up we have Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero in a secret gay relationship. Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero were best friends in real life and they were incredibly close when they were both alive. Some fans created the conspiracy that their relationship was not platonic and they were actually secret gay lovers. These conspiracy theorists believe that this is true because after Eddie's death, Benoit was sobbing for months and he spoke to Eddie through his personal diary up until his own passing in 2007. These conspiracy theorists believe that the way that Benoit mourned Eddie's death was abnormal and that it was because they were actually in a not safe for work relationship with each other hiding it from their wives. And now we're at the deepest and darkest part of the iceberg, the last entry on tier 1. 
and that is the real reason behind Rick Rude's death. Ravishing Rick Rude was one of the most beloved WWE superstars that broke out of the rock and wrestling era and one of the best heel characters of all time. However, Rick Rude unfortunately died of an overdose in 1999 and his death was ruled accidental. However, some wrestlers like the Honky Tonk Man and Jim Neidhart have said that he actually took his own life because doctors had to cut off the member in between his legs. The conspiracy goes like this. Rude injected Viagra into his member because he thought he could get an instant hard on and fornicate with a lot of girls, but instead he got an infection and his nuts enlarged to the size of cantaloupes, so doctors had to cut everything away from his private area. And then after he got home from the surgery, he then took his own life. This story has been denied by other people and that's what makes it a conspiracy, but boy what a conspiracy it is. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed this video please check out our other videos, also please like, share, comment and subscribe, but anyway, goodbye.